to call uh, Ron Mack. I rise on behalf of New Zealand to, uh, first to make a, a brief call uh, in defence of defence personnel. Um, I have to say, Mr Chairman, I sat uh, briefly, subbed in briefly in the Foreign Affairs Defence Select Committee to take the opportunity to hear uh, the Minister of Defence uh, make a presentation along with the Chief of Defence Force, Tim Keating. And in order to get a bit of clarification around what I could not find in the appropriations, and what I could not find was a clear indication or any detail of a pay increase for Defence Force personnel. I think it's only appropriate at this time, uh, Mr Chairman, to remind the House that it wasn't so long ago when we had a certain gentleman standing on that side of the House yelling at the House. In fact, I actually believe it was outside of standing orders myself, but the Speaker uh, never responded. But to Don't relitigate that. Please carry on. Well, he didn't respond, um, Mr Chair. But the question was put to this side of the House that we should gain some intestinal fortitude. And in fact, we should get some guts. And the question was put across the House is about how the opposition needed to get some guts and support the deployment of these troops. So often in my time in the Defence Force, uh, 15 years in the New Zealand Army and five years uh, operating internationally, I heard many, many speakers from this House talking about how they valued Defence Force people. In fact, if I summed up the number of minutes of speeches at Anzac Day services uh, of government MPs, ministerial MPs from both sides of the House, Labor National, both the same to me, uh, talking about how they valued Defence Force contributions. I mean, if I had a dollar for every second, I wouldn't be here today, I'd be retired. But what we now know from the appropriations is despite the calls for get some guts and despite the accolades poured upon Defence Force, it didn't seem to be enough to move this government to give them a pay rise. There's nothing in this budget for Defence Force personnel for a pay rise. And in fact, when I look a little bit deeper, what, what do we find in New Zealand first? We find that this government actually has the legislative tools and the mechanisms to do one thing for our Defence Force personnel those deployed to Iraq who've got the guts to go, and that's to give them a tax-free wage. Australia's done it, United States has done it, but the New Zealand government, and when I asked the Minister of Defence that very question in Select Committee, his answer was, well, no, they didn't consider that. My question, New Zealand first question is why? Why not? If these Defence Force personnel are so vital to the foreign policy of this nation, so vital to the foreign policies and views of this government, then why can this government not see fit to pay them a tax-free wage? As the legislation, Minister Bennett, allows your cabinet to do, Minister Bennett, mouthing at me across the House, take a call, answer my call. Tell the Defence Force people, as opposed to just chipping at me and mouthing across the House, uh, Minister Bennett, tell the people of New Zealand and the people at Linton and Burnham why this government chose. And if I look at the, select, look at the Cabinet Committee, who is meant to advocate on behalf of these Defence Force people, the people that value so much, the people that the government wants to pour so many accolades on, but is too cheapskate to actually pay them what they're worth? Who do I find on this committee? Uh-oh, the ministerial committee that makes this determination is made up of the Prime Minister, John Key. Well, he clearly didn't think they deserved a pay rise. He clearly didn't think they deserved a tax-free wage for being in Iraq. Minister of Defence, well, who's going who's to expect a hell of a lot of support from that gentleman? And the Minister of Finance, I'm surprised with Bill English. I had almost picked that Bill English was on his own. And the Minister of Foreign Affairs may, for the purposes of Section 2, be decide an amount of income derived by the member for being an operation area is exempt tax, income tax. But this government, no matter what it says out there in the hustings, no matter what it says in the media, no matter what it says in the House, cannot find it within itself to pay our troops in Iraq today a tax-free salary. And what would that do, Mr Chair? Well, let me tell you, as someone who has deployed, unlike the person who was yelling out across the House, he wouldn't know what deployment meant. What I can tell you is that when the husbands, the wives, those service personnel are offshore, listen up, Alistair, Scott, when they're offshore, it is left down to the spouse remaining to look after the kids, to pay the power bill, to pay the rent, now that they're subject to market rents because their houses have been taken away from them by this government, pay all of those bills and deal with the coughs, the colds, the trauma that normally comes up in raising a family. It is hard to do as a couple. It is even harder to do when one is on their own. It is even harder to do if one's spouse is deployed in Iraq and cannot get back.
When all those things come to a head, it's left down to the spouse back here at home. And it's left down to this government to have some heart and recognise that and pay our Defence Force personnel well, David appropriately. Bennett.